Angela, I, before I let you out of here, I just wanted you to get the last word in. Maybe, Jeremy, do you have one last question for Angela? If you do, I know Jamie Cheeslice, who, who, who uh, attended the convention, might have a question, but we'll get you out here. But I want you also to get the last word, Angela, because this is, you know, one of those situations where I, I don't think the libertarian, uh, the libertarians have ever come up with a decent candidate. Right now, I'm so upset that, you know, I know Dave decided not to run, but had yeah. Spike Cohen continued to run with Maj Ture. And let me tell you something. Message out there from a man, Spike. Like, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take Spike again to come yep. help kind of calm everybody down, not set their hair on fire, not jump ship. I know Chase Oliver wasn't their dream candidate, but I still think he's better than Donald Trump. I still think he's better than Joe Biden, of course. Sure. I would vote for him over Jill Stein, over Cornell West. I would vote for Chase Oliver over all these guys. Yep. But uh, – I know uh, Jamie's got a question, but if you want to comment on that real quick, Angela, because like I said, your job is almost impossible. I think you did an amazing job. And also, too, if, if you want to give some uh, explanations on why you invited Donald Trump and uh, RFK, and you also did invite Cornell West and Jill Stein. So oh, yeah. Go yeah, right absolutely. ahead. Jump into it. And get so her, so get her I, invited, I invited all of them. Yeah. And Jill was collecting signatures for ballot access in New York. So totally understandable that she couldn't come. She would have if I'd been able to put together a legitimate debate, you know, and I, and I tried and we got pretty darn close with the rebuttal, but we didn't have an actual debate. And Cornell West had an engagement already in California. Biden's people just never, you know, got back to me. Um, we did get Afro man. I was really trying to get, and, and I had actually reached out to Chink Uger when he was running too, but then he ended up, you know, dropping out. Um, so I wanted like really well-rounded representation, but the Trump campaign, they responded right away. They responded mm -hmm. right away to the invitation. They really wanted to be there. They, they said that we were very important and that we were going to decide the election and they had to do everything they could to, to win our votes. So I've worked with them. They watched our poll. I communicated with them. They were genuinely looking at the interest, uh, at the, um, the issues that we're interested in. And so that's that's how that worked out. You know, like they gave us the most the most care and attention. Kennedy was a, was a second. You know, we've we've maintained, you know, good, good uh, communication with his campaign as well. Oh, I froze again. I'm so sorry. It's OK. Well, um, I was upset no. that Kennedy pulled the whole the he pulled the he eliminated the press gaggle. Right. Like we didn't get a chance to get questions with him. And I was upset by that because yeah. he got Vivek Ramaswamy, Thomas Massey. All these guys came and faced the fire. I mean, R Vivek Ramaswamy took two questions before he bolted on out of there. Uh, he didn't want any more follow ups because we we're talking about critical. Uh, uh, what was it? Replacement theory. Mm. <laughs> and he kind of just bolted on out after I started cornering, cornering him on certain things. But um, I thought it was an awesome decision to bring in. Uh, Trump and RFK, and I know yeah, people don't too. understand this who didn't who didn't show up. Uh, Angela, she probably can, can uh, agree to this too as well. Is that there were members who were pissed and yelling and screaming. There were people who had to be removed yep. from certain times. They were so pissed off and aggravated that Donald Trump, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, and uh, RFK were there. But it paid off. We got yeah. the most media coverage. Like it was unprecedented. Also. Our vice presidential debate was the most well attended that it had ever been. And that's a huge, huge thing. And we have never had a debate with a candidate who has been on the main stage in a GOP debate. And we got that. Yeah, that yeah. I mean, the, like the Vivek stuff is almost more important than the Trump stuff, at, at least for party politics. Like that was huge for us. So, yeah, and, and really quickly before Jamie, uh, before uh, Jeremy jumps in or Jamie jumps in with a question, um, the vice president race, I want to talk about Mike Termont. Because obviously I was the first person who got wrecked and walled as he came off the stage. I was one of the first people to get Chase Oliver after he secured the nomination. And Mike Rechtenwald talked about somebody being a snake. And he was very upset what went on. And, you know, I, I saw Maj do his video, Maj Ture, who, you know, appeared on my show several times throughout the whole weekend. You know, he talked about, you know, those things go on. They do go on. Do you think that, you know, there was, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to do that because that's what I do. Do you think there is reasoning for what Mike Termott did? Because I thought Mike Termott finished second in the debate. And I love Mike Termott's position on the border, mm -hmm. right? Like, And that's kind of weird when it comes to the Mises caucus. They don't really have that old school kind of like traditional libertarian ideology that says, 
hey, you know, uh, we should have open borders, freedom of movement. Mike Termott said, like, the best thing we have in this, one of the best things we have in this country is immigration. We need to just tweak what's going on over there. Chase mm -hmm. Oliver talked about having an Ellis Island kind of situation, understanding who's coming in. If they're here for good reasons, go ahead, go do your thing. But do you think Mike Termott made a move because he had saw what happened on Saturday with Rechtenwald with the Joe Biden moment, and he saw Chase kind of shining, and he said, you know what? I'm going to make that switch right now. I'm going to go. I'm going to attach my my pony to this guy. I mean, uh, what I'm saying is, do you think that it was somewhat merited in your mind that he made that switch to move away from Rechtenwald and go with Chase? I don't know. I mean, he swears up and down that he had never made any agreements. My understanding is that he did have an agreement with Michael Rechtenwald. So yeah. I don't really know what happened. You know, I got to be careful being being critical of that. It's politics. So yeah. if he did have an agreement and he changed it, those things happen in politics, you know, and it was no secret that, you know, Michael Rechtenwald was my, was my um, preferred candidate, but I try to treat them all, you know, with a lot of respect and courtesy, give them all a heads up about what's coming down the pipeline, you know, with the Trump appearance, all of that good stuff. Um, and at the end of the day, I got to support the, the people on our ticket. And that includes Mike Termott, you know, regardless of the controversy. So it's a, it's a delicate dance. The other thing, though, that I think people were really upset about that we didn't touch on is the improper seating of delegates. And I know that yes. you care a lot about election integrity. And there were delegates in Oklahoma and Washington who were seated in violation of their state bylaws, which is in violation of the national bylaws. Now, we fixed it. And I ruled it out of order. And they overturned my ruling. Um but, but the we delegates the overturned the rules, by the yes, way. They did. Yes. yes, they did. Uh, they wanted to seat them. And that's that was the will of the body in that moment. And a lot of people have opinions on whether or not that's OK. But what I did do was address it when someone raised it earlier. And we amended the bylaws on the fly to seat them legally. So then no one could sue us over it, basically. Which is, once again, a democracy, right? Like that happened there. You, you, it was addressed. It went yeah. to the delegates. The delegates, sp delegates spoke. Very interesting, too, as well. The last round that Chase Oliver won, he had to beat none of the above. Nota, right? Do you think that there needs to be some amending of the way we do things? In other words, the reason why it went down to him versus none of the above and, the, and, and Recton Wall was removed is because there were these write-ins that were there. And a lot of people say that, well, that's not fair. The write-ins don't get eliminated. Oh, they get to, so to kind of move you know, Recton Wall into a position where he's got to get knocked off. I even asked Recton Wall is if he's going to object. And he says, there's nothing we can object on over here. Do you think that system needs a little tweaking right there when yeah. it comes to that situation? Yeah, I absolutely do. Also, the bylaws say that if NOTA wins, then NOTA's what goes on the presidential ballots. And, you know, like I was so tired. I did not say this at the time. And I wish that I had. Dude, you can just amend the bylaws right there on the fly. And, and do a revote, you know, no one wanted to do that. It was, you know, I was trying to read the room and also I was really tired, but, but that should be addressed because people just stall, stall, stall. That's the other thing. There were, there were, there were state delegations who were intentionally doing stall tactics. I know because people sent me screenshots of them doing it and they, you know, like it's, it's tough, man. Um, it's a better yeah. system than the than the DNC. I'll, I'll Way better that. than the DNC. Do you have a question, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, my question would be more in the realm of, of philosophical. So, if I can try and understand the libertarian position better, so you know, we both uh, you know believe corporations uh, are evil or you know uh, oppressive institutions. On the left, the solution is things like uh, you know greater regu government regulation, anti or antitrust laws, or you know the socialists would advocate for government takeover of corporations uh, so that they can be run democratically and establish uh, uh, you know, fair wage structure. So, uh, uh, you know, w what are the libertarian solutions? So it's, it's a free market system, but doesn't that inevitably lead to, uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, under capitalism, the big eat the small. So aren't you inevitably going to get, you know, these huge corporations under a free market system? How do you believe in curbing corporate abuses and power? Uh, the free market does a much better job of curbing corporate abuse and, and systems than the government does. I mean, the government just incentivizes them and, and works with them to help them grow and become monopolies. Free markets. Um, and, they, 
and, and especially if you integrate the abolition of intellectual property, not trade secrets, but intellectual property. If you do not say, you know, so-and-so company that's making insulin, you get, you know, you get intellectual property, you get the patent on this for X number of years, like that goes away. That's a really important thing. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, the libertarians, they want to remove the, me the mechanism that's keeping yeah. everybody down, right? They don't necessarily have anything in its place, but it's one of the big things they believe in. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's going to happen that way. You know, uh, this even, book. even when we OK, so you got that book. What this book is book. that? Show that. This is Progress by Johan Norberg. And it talks about the upward economic mobility that happens once once countries adopt more free market uh, policies. It shows people coming out of poverty and the poverty rate dropping drastically when people are allowed to have things like property rights and to just have the free exchange of goods. It's a really good book. It's not heavy handed. It's not um, really boring and technical and dry, but it, but it's it's a good size, but you can flip through it. I, I highly recommend it for anyone who's skeptical of just a capitalist system. You know, and, and I don't think that we have pure capitalism in the United States. It is a mix. There are a lot of government restraints. Some people think it's good. You know, I think it's bad. But it just shows that the more capitalistic you become, the, the poverty changes, right? People have smartphones. They have access to food, clean running water, things that we are just like, well, duh, of course you would have it. The reality is not everybody had that 100 years ago. Like it's, it's actually like it's really incredible what capitalism and innovation have done for us. So, so that's my perspective on it is that it's like, it's an, it's an amazing, beautiful thing. And I love to see people lifted out of poverty and I'm less concerned with, with billionaires and I'm more concerned with like the lower income um, people and making sure that they have access to the things that make their lives better. Jeremy, did you have a did you have a follow up? Because I mean, there are well, questions. Well, like, it's talk an interesting about ideology. Debate. Yeah, we could have a, a very interesting. We talk about this all day long. Yeah, because, uh, I've got to yeah. take off soon. I've got yeah. a baby. <laughs> I know you have a baby. Okay. You got to take well, off. My other it's question. Winning, right? I guess we don't have time. Yeah, because the it's issue of foreign point. policy. You know, we're both against the imperialistic intervention and military. Yes. Now, people on the left would uh, and theorists going back to whether it's Hobson or Lenin of empire. You know, look at capitalism as the driver of empires. At corporations, uh, you know, search for for new markets for the plunder of natural resources to set up mines. Uh, so they see capitalism at the root of imperialism, but obviously you, you don't see it that way. So I don't. I mean, unfortunately, people have been plundering and you know, it, waging wars for empire since the dawn of civilization, and uh, you know, it's a it's a defect in in human nature, but, you know, I think having strong second amendment rights and free trade and free flow of goods across borders really, really hinders that. You know, I think, I think, was it Hayek or Mises who said when, when goods don't cross borders, troops will. So I really like free trade. You know, I, I trade with China. Why punish, um, why punish wonderful people just because they have, you know, what I think is a crap government, like trade with everybody you can. So what about central planning, though? I mean, why can't we play nicely in the sandbox and do things good that work well together? I mean, I know I don't want to mention the Chinese because I know that the libertarians would be like, oh, the Chinese. But but why can't we play nicely in the sandbox and find a way to have central planning for infrastructure projects or building schools or hospitals and roads? Why can't that work in a libertarian mindset? And they always throw out, well, it's against uh, private property. Why well, it just doesn't. I mean, it just doesn't like, uh, you know, it works on a small scale uh, when and when it's more voluntary. But for hundreds of millions of people, I mean, look at the VA. The, the VA is the strongest argument against Medicare for all. It's centralized, um, you know, it's centralized health care. And you got you got them putting the suicide hotline up in a 900 number instead of like it's just a it's a disaster. People commit suicide all the time because they can't get proper care like it's it's abysmal and it's full of horror stories and i just i'm like i do not want to expand the va when i think about that going everywhere else i'm like keep that far away from me same with remember when obamacare was rolled out and it just like broke well we do like i said we can argue these all day long jamie get your last question so angela can go take care of oh, yeah, yeah yeah like she just opened a whole new box of like questions for me to ask but i'll i'll, I'll leave the, the healthcare thing alone i didn't really have a question but i just wanted to say um 
I thought you did do a, a fantastic <laughs> job hosting the the, uh, the convention. And you were funny, too. You handled all these people who were trying to give you a lot of grief. You handled them with grace. And it was amazing to watch. And for all the people who aren't happy with the outcome, you do need to understand that you had an election process that had a lot of integrity to the process. You got the result from the way that the the process was supposed to work. And if if you wanted the Mises caucus to win and they didn't, then that's a failure on the Mises caucus for not playing politics the way they needed to, yes. to make sure they worked with the, got enough of the other caucuses to join them to make sure they got the 51%. Agreed. So uh, at the end of the day, Chase Oliver represents the uh, libertarian position better than anybody else on the ballot if you're a libertarian and you should support him for that and if if not if you disagree with that reason you should support him for ballot access to make sure that you retain it for the next election um so that's what i have to say to libertarians but I, I love I, it i do have a quick uh some quick videos they're very short if you want to watch them we got we got you closing out the uh the convention this is like one o'clock in the morning if you want to watch that all right real quick and was that norbert i'm gonna look up that book we're live, but we're not on C-SPAN. We're on pasta to go. Thank oh, you, pasta to go. <laughs> that was that was your shout out for us. This is the one I wanted. I meant to show you. Okay, so this is just you um, closing out the uh, the day, and uh, I don't know if you guys have it because it's not on your Libertarian uh, YouTube channel because they, they cut it off at twelve hours. Hi. <laughs> at twelve fifty seven a.m. Microphone four. Are there any objections to adjournment? Hearing no objection. Objection. We are adjourned. Wow. Yeah! So I thought that was a great moment to close out one of the best political conventions in the history of the libertarian party one of the best i've attended and i just thought it was be cool to relive that moment for a second so i, I want to thank you for for hosting us and doing such a phenomenal job with that convention well thank you so got thank you guys so much for coming it was really great to have you um i really appreciate it and i hope you continue to to cover our events and i promise i'm going to try to make them incredible for you so you want to be there Give the audience the last comments you have on what you what people should do, how they should vote, uh, and uh, do your little goodbye. Angela McArdle, the chair of the Libertarian Party. Vote Libertarian. Vote Chase Oliver for president. You can find out more at LP.org. Thank you so much, guys. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, I am Craig Pasta Jardula, the captain, along with the co-pilot over there, the professor himself, Jeremy Kuzmarov. That was Angela McArdle, chair of the Libertarian Party, and you're listening to Pasta to Go. We'll see you in just a second. Uh, what was the name of the book? I'm going to look it up. Norbert. What was his first name? Johan Norberg. Okay. Norberg. Nice okay. Package. Jeremy is writes for Covert up. Magazine. He's well, nice. you're the editor in chief, right? Nice. That's right. Yeah. Covert Action Covert Magazine. Magazine. And that's from an ex yeah. start. That paper was started from an ex CIA whistleblower. Ooh. Yeah. So a lot that of Jeremy stuff you guys will love. Yeah. I would love yeah. that. All right. I got to drop because I got to grab a baby. But thank you guys so much. I'll chat with you later, Pasta. Okay. Thanks, Angela. Bye bye.